Uh, let me start by introducing uh, the topic and motivating the topic by analyzing its title uh, piece by piece. So we have worked on the sound event detection and classification tasks. Uh, so the main focus is on environmental sound recognition, since that under real world conditions, this is a very challenging problem with very relevant applications, including applications that have a strong impact in human lives. For instance, self-driving cars, surveillance, machine fall monitoring, and even healthcare applications. And most of the systems used for these applications are, are based on, on deep learning models. Uh, however, it is often hard to provide insights into the decision-making process of these uh, neural networks. Uh, so their, their deep structure and nonlinear transformations uh, allow this network for, to, to learn very powerful representations, but at the same time, uh, make it difficult to understand the inner workings of the models and extract the knowledge about the problem that uh, the model learns in a way that humans can understand. And also this opaque nature may produce uh, unintended effects such as reinforcing inequality and bias and being vulnerable to adversarial attacks. And besides, uh, these black boxes are hard to debug and troubleshoot. So integrating such algorithms into our daily lives requires wide social acceptance, but the side effects we mentioned before may, may undermine trustworthiness. So in consonance with this, there is a recent search of research of machine learning models that provide um, explanations of the decisions in some level of detail. And this field is commonly known as interpretable machine learning. And moreover, models that, that can be interpreted can be better debugged and audited in order to uh, devise defense methods, foresee malfunctions, discover edge cases, and detect biases. Uh, therefore, in this thesis, we we propose interpretable deep learning models that can be can be better debugged and audited for the sound event detection and classification tasks. So we will now do an introduction of the two topics of this thesis. And afterwards, we will present the contributions that have been made during this thesis. So let's start with the interpretable deep learning field. So deep learning has truly revolutionized uh, several scientific disciplines and practical problems. Take computer vision, for example, where it, it excels at uh, tasks like detecting objects uh, in images. Uh, but also in the so trending now natural language processing field, uh, where deep learning comes to the forefront in tasks like predicting the next word in a sentence. But also has brought state-of-the-art results in audio related problems such as sound recognition, music classification, uh, speech recognition, etc. Um, however, studies on adversarial attacks uh, show us that these deep learning models can be easily fooled. So in this example, we have uh, data instances that are correctly predicted by the network and then applying, applying a minor transformation, which is actually unnoticeable. Uh, the, um, it is possible to, to fool the network to get uh, wrong predictions. And, but also we could find intriguing results by testing the model on edge cases. So to illustrate this, I would like to show a demo of a, of a neural network for sound event detection uh, trained on the well-known urban sound data set. Um, so this real-time demo shows how a model that performs very well can be, can be easily fooled. So let's see first that the model um, so it works pretty well. Let me check that the audio is, yeah, okay. So let's see what happens if we test if we test the model on Brazilian samba music. So you could argue that the model fails because Samba music is not in the model vocabulary. 
And there could be some acoustic similarities between some per percussion instruments and a shock hammer. However, street music is one of the classes. So this, this example, it's expected to be predicted as a street music rather than, rather than shock hammer. And given the black box nature of this deep learning model, it is not easy to debug and troubleshoot to fix this kind of issue. Um, and motivated by this, we develop deep learning models that allows the designers to better debug uh, the networks. All right. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Most of interpretable methods are focused on explaining how the data is, is processed or represented by the network. So this is known as a postdoc uh, explanation as it aims to explain a pre-trained opaque model. But we will show that this, these methods may produce unreliable uh, explanations. So on the other hand, um, by adding application-specific constraints, one can strive for rendering some form of interpretability while being as accurate as a black box model. Uh, these are the reasons why we adopted this approach during this thesis. Um, a problematic aspect of interpretability is that this is a domain specific notion. So it's not, there is no a single definition of what, uh, of what attributes make, make a model uh, interpretable. Uh, another critical issue is that the interpretability can, can be accomplished uh, different degrees from a fully transparent model to a mildly constrained model. Uh, so the design of this fully transparent models, it is very challenging. So we instead include some layers or constraints uh, based on domain knowledge to bring some interpretability to the deep learning models. Uh, some postdoc methods try to explain the input output behavior of a black box model. For instance, training a proxy linear, a proxy model, sorry, that is, uh, that, that imitates the behavior of the original model, but is easier to interpret. But, um, since the proxy model is typically a local, a local linear approximation of a very complex nonlinear model, it can fall short uh, in providing a reliable explanation. Um, besides, uh, some visualization methods highlight the input characteristics that strongly influence the output. Among the most common ones are the saliency maps, which use the gradients, the gradients sorry, to identify input features that uh, strongly influence the output. So they can be helpful to get this kind of importance value, but not to disclose how this information is being used within the model. So they can also produce unreliable explanations. Uh, so re uh, therefore, rather than producing explanation of black boxes, some research seeks to develop intrinsically interpretable neural networks that provide expl faithful explanation to what the model actually computes. So recent, recent approaches for designing this kind of intrinsically interpretable networks are based on explanations through prototypes and concepts. Uh, prototype classification is a classical form of case-based reasoning, which is consistent with how humans explain the decision-making process in, in visual classification tasks. Uh, so the decisions are based on a few relevant examples known as prototypes. Um, so these prototypes serve as a distillation of the data and have a high interpretable value. And the prototypes are vectors that are close or identical to, to instances from the training set. So the predictions are based on the distance from the data instance to each prototype, um, which, uh, which are the actual computations of the, mo of the model to, to make the predictions. And that's why these, uh, these methods are intrinsically inter interpretable. So this, these methods have been mainly applied for the classification, for the image classification task. For instance, the architecture proposed by Lee et al., which is of particular relevance to our work. So they append a prototype layer to a convolutional neural network. And these prototypes are learned uh, during training. And these are examples for the for the classification of handwritten digits. Uh, note that it could be more than one prototype per each class. So let's now uh, introduce the sound event detection and classification tasks. So environmental sound class uh, recognition can be tackled in different ways. A possible approach called sound classification 
aims to identify the predominant sound source um, in each audio snippet. A more complicated approach called sound event detection uh, is defined as the task of finding individual sound events by indicating the onset time, the onset time, the duration, and a text label indicating the type of sound. So the detection and classification of acoustic scenes and events, DK's workshop, is an annual venue that promotes research in environmental sound recognition. And this field aims to study methods for the automatic analysis and understanding of environmental sounds in different contexts. <laughs> uh, given the excellent results that of deep learning models in other fields, they started to be generally used for audio-related problems, um, including the DK's community. So this figure illustrates uh, this kind of paradigm shift from shallow learning to uh, deep learning models. So it shows the percentage of deep learning-related papers in the DK's proceedings over, over the years. And as deep learning has become predominant or omnipresent, um, some papers on interpretable uh, interpretable models have been published. Um, as illustrated in, in this figure, there is a still a lack of research in, of, of this field in the, in, in the audio research communities, but especially in the case. Uh, actually, the 2029 uh, proceedings has only two papers on interpretable models, and one of those is ours. So this thesis aims to reduce this gap by promoting the use of interpretable deep learning models uh, within the audio research communities, especially in the case. So uh, as we mentioned previously, although the research in interpretable machine learning is quickly expanding, um, the existing work that focuses on, on, on audio is quite limited. Most of the research follows a postdoc approach, for instance, uh, using saliency maps and training linear proxy linear models. Um, some previous work has also focused on intrinsically interpretable uh, models, mainly for the design of parametric filters in the first layers of the convolutional layers. And also attention mechanisms have, have been used for to add some kind of interpretability in the audio domain. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, we have proposed the first intrinsically interpretable model uh, based on prototypes for in the in the audio domain. So let me now list uh, the contributions of this thesis. So we will present in an interpretable model for sound classification. And we will show that this model is not uh, suitable for the sound event detection task. So we will present in an extension for this task. Uh, we will also present an extension, uh, sorry, uh, an interpretable front end for end-to-end -end convolutional neural networks, software tools for reproducible research, and data sets uh, for environmental sound recognition in urban environment. So the first two contributions will form the core of this presentation and will be presented in detail. And the last three contributions will be presented more briefly. So let's now dive into the first part of this presentation, the audio prototype network, an interpretable model for audio classification. Um, so this diagram will illustrate how the decision-making process is devised in this model. So in this example, we have three prototypes. So when the model tries to classify a new instance, it calculates a frequency-dependent similarity between the input and each prototype. Then we will integrate this frequency dimension, the frequency dimension of this similarity to get one value for each prototype. And these similarity values will be connected to the output using a fully connected layer. So in this case, the input is more similar to the to the engine idling, so this value is higher, and the, this this value is highly connected to the output of the engine idling, and that's why this instance is predicted as an engine idling. So the audio bright prototype network has two main components: an autoencoder and a classifier. The role of the encoder is to represent the input in a, in a, in a latent space of useful features. So the decoder function is used to transform this latent space back to the input representation. Um, the, the predictions of the classifier are based on a frequency dependent similarity between the input and a set of prototypes. Then uh, a weighted sum layer is used to, to control the contribution of each frequency beam 
into the similarity measure, and then this this similarity measure is fully connected to the output in order to produce the prediction. So uh, to train this model, we will use three different losses. Um, so for the coding process to have enough audio quality, it is necessary to optimize the autoencoder by minimizing its reconstruction error. So to accomplish this, we use a, a mean square error function over its inputs and outputs. And remember that the prototypes are learned during training and are expected to be close to data instances or to be similar to data instances. Uh, so we use a loss function that, that forces that. So we first calculate the distance from each data instance to each prototype, and we minimize the distance from each data instance to at least one prototype and vice versa. So using this kind of loss, we ensure that the prototypes are similar to data instances and data instances cluster around prototypes. And finally, we have a loss to learn the classification task, which in this case is the classical categorical cross entropy loss. So the proposed model achieves accuracy results comparable to the state of the art in three different sound classification tasks. As urban sound classification, music instrument classification, and speech classification. So this contrast with the widely extended assumption that there is a trade-off between, an avoidable trade-off between interpretability and accuracy. So a model could be at the same time interpretable and accurate. But once we know the performance of the model is comparable to the state of the art or to the baselines, uh, we should highlight the benefits of being an interpretable model. This allows us to carry out an analysis beyond the typical accuracy measure to provide insight into the inner workings of the network. So in the following slides, we will, uh, we will, we will show that we can inspect different parts of the network. So, um, First note that the prototypes can be converted to the input representation using the decoder function. So we can, so we can see uh, the prototypes in the input representation, which in this case is the ML spectrogram. And it can be noticed that the ML spectrograms exhibit the typical traits of the sound classes that they represent. And we can also extract the audio, the audio signal from each prototype. So we can listen, in, listen to them and confirm that the prototypes actually represent the corresponding classes. So let me play some of the examples. We can also inspect the weights of the weighted sum layer. Um, the role of this layer is to is to is to learn the best way to to weight each frequency bin in the in the latent space for each prototype. So it can be useful to focus on frequency bins where the energy is more concentrated, or to better discriminate between overlapping sound classes. So we can verify its correct functioning by by inspecting the layer's weight after training. So, uh, for instance, in the case of the siren and the engine, uh, the siren and the engine island prototypes, the um, the weights of this layer uh, correlates with the energy envelope of the prototypes. Um, so, the lay, for example, for the siren, the, the layer gives more importance to the mid frequencies, and for the engine, gives more importance to the low frequencies. However, in the case of the shock hammer, this layer gives more significance to the high frequencies even the, the energy is more concentrated in the low frequencies. And this could be uh, as a way to distinguish this class from others that have a, uh, high energies in low frequencies, such as the engine island example. And finally, the weights of the fully connected layer can be also be expected. So this layer transforms the similarity measure into, into the output. Uh, so the analysis of these ways contributes to the interpretability of the network. And more specifically, we are able to tell which prototypes are more representative of which classes. So these are the weights uh, after training. Uh, the x-axis represents the prototypes that are ordered by the, the corresponding classes. And the y-axis represents 
the, the target class. So you can notice that most of the prototypes are connected to the corresponding class with only two exceptions that could be uh, that could be illustrate acoustic similarities. For instance, the last prototype of the of the air conditioner, which is highly connected to the ancient island, and this could be reasonable. And also the first prototype of, of dog bark, which is highly connected to the children target. And believe me, <laughs> there are dogs that sound like children, so it also makes some sense. Um, so the interpretable architecture or APNET uh, allow designers to refine the bug and improve the model. In this regard, we have proposed automatic methods to refine the network. Uh, so the first method eliminates redundant prototypes. So what we did is that we calculate uh, the distance from each prototype to each prototype and remove those that are too close. Um, so we retrain the model after, after removing this prototype and obtain these uh, results. And we repeat this process, but for the channels of the last convolutional layer and retrain the model again and obtain these results. So this, this shows that uh, after this refinement process, the model improves the results, even outperforming the most competitive baseline. And, and overall, we improve the original model by 3.3% in accuracy and reduce the number of parameters by 2.7 million. So these results illustrate that interpretability may also help to design better models. So we have described two automatic methods to refine APNET that led to better performance and smaller networks. Uh, however, when working with networks designed to be interpretable, uh, like APNET, it is also possible to visualize the models and allow the users to refine them manually. Uh, to that end, we designed a web-based application which, uh, which allowed the users to interact with the model. So the user can navigate in a two-dimensional uh, space that, that represents the, in the input instances and uh, the prototypes. And it is also possible to see the ML spectrograms of each instance and prototype and uh, listening to the, to the audio signals. And then the user can remove selected prototypes and can convert data instances into into new prototypes and after after doing so, these changes in the model the user can save the model and train the model again and evaluate it again um, and this tool is also helpful to to do some debugging in the model for instance for instance sorry following the, the the demo that we did at the beginning of the presentation we could notice that the samba music signals cluster close to the to the shark hammer uh, prototypes that are in gray there. Um, so we could convert one of these instances into a prototype of the street music class, for instance. Or we could even create a new class for the Samba music following some kind of few shot learning approach. Uh, so let me recap now how the classification is done based on prototypes. So for instance, in this example, we have three prototypes. So when uh, when the model tries to, classif tries to classify a new instance, it calculates the distance from the input to each, to each prototype and makes the decision based on that. However, in a polyphonic setting, like the sound event detection problem, an input instance corresponding to several classes uh, simultaneous, simultaneously, it should be close to, to the prototypes of those, those, class, those, class, sorry, those classes at the same time. And learning such latent space proved challenging in practice, thus motivating an alternative approach that we are presenting in the following section. So we will now present an adaptation of APNET for the sound event detection task. So this network learns uh, local prototypes. These are data points in the, in the latent space that represent a patch, a patch in the input uh, representation. So the proposed model learns attention maps that, that are used to position each, each uh, local prototype in the time frequency plane. So we multiply each prototype to the corresponding attention map, and then we sum all these maps in order to reconstruct the input. Of course, using this kind of approach 
to reconstruct the input using patches will produce uh, non-natural results. Uh, but this is not the main goal of this, uh, of this model. Um, so instead, the attention maps and the prototypes contain useful information for the interpretability of the model. And so the, the, the sound event detection tasks is only based on the attention maps. So we first integrate the temporal dimension of these maps, and then we concatenate all these, all these integrated attention maps. We, final, we finally connect this to the output using a fully connected layer, and we will include some regularization terms to keep only a few, sorry, a few connections after, after training. So the idea here is that each prototype can be associated with one or two classes. So this model uses the same autoencoder uh, from APNet, and we also use another encoder uh, to extract M attention maps in the latent space. And each attention map it will be uh, related to one prototype. And note that the prototypes represent one point in the time frequency plane, in the latent space. So this represents a, a patch of shape equal to the receptive field of the network in the input representation. So we convolve the tension maps with the prototypes in order to reconstruct the latent space. And so the tension maps represent the specific weight of each local prototype in each time frequency, time frequency point in order to have a good reconstruction in the latent space. Uh, so using the decoder from the top branch, we can reconstruct. So we, or we, we can see this reconstruction in the input space. So we can also inspect the, the result of this reconstruction. Um, the sound event detection task will be also, we only based on the attention maps. So we first integrate the temporal dimension of these maps. And then we use a fully connected layer to uh, produce the predictions based on, on those maps. So along with the losses that that are designed for the classification task and for to learn the autoencoder, we will have two losses that establish that attention maps are learned to be an explicit explanation of how the model makes the prediction. So this loss ensures that uh, the attention maps are interpretable since they are learned to position each prototype in the time frequency plane in order to have a good reconstruction. Uh, moreover, this loss ensures that the prototypes are similar to data instances, so we can reconstruct the prototypes and, and, and inspect them. Uh, we also include regularization terms to, to keep the model more, more simple and interpretable. So we use L1 regularization to, to ensure some sparsity in the attention maps, so this is to prevent the network from reconstructing the latent space using many prototypes at the same time. And we will use the same regularization for the weights of the fully connected layer. And the idea here is that the output of a given class will be connected to a few points in, the, in both the prototype and frequency dimension of the similarity measure. So, so this, this, uh, these realization terms are devised to keep the explanations as simple as possible. So this figure shows the performance of the performance comparison of the proposed models. Uh, so we compare the model to two black box baselines. Uh, we can also compare the number of parameters. So note that the performance of the proposed model is comparable to, to the baselines, but with uh, fewer parameters. Um, besides, for each data instance, it is possible to extract the corresponding attention maps and to provide an explanation on how the model makes the predictions. I know that the model can detect simultaneous sound events whose energy is uh, concentrated in different frequency beams. And since the attention maps are designed to, to reconstruct the latent space and are the only information used for the classification task, this they represent the inherent uh, explanation of how the model makes the predictions. So let me play the data instance. This is a, a data set of synthetic mixtures of urban sounds. So then we use a mask, the yeah, the attention maps to mask the the male spectrograms. Uh, 
Ako to sign. So let's move now to the second part of this presentation that presents some contributions uh, in less detail. So first we have an interpretable front end for end-to-end -end convolutional neural networks. So uh, deep learning based systems for audio related problems such as those presented before can be illustrated as, as follows. First, we have signal processing methods that extract or that calculates an input representation from the audio waveform. And this rep representation is, uh, so then a deep learning model sorry, is used to map this representation into the output in order to get uh, the prediction. Uh, alternatively, end-to-end -end models can be trained to obtain the predictions directly from the waveform signals. In this case, the first layers of the network are intended to do the feature ex extraction part. Uh, so we, can, we, we propose an interpretable front-end of this type that can also be inspected. This is a one-dimensional CNN that is uh, initialized to extract the main spectrogram. And then we have a two-dimensional CNN to uh, produce the predictions. Um, so we propose a very simple approach to calculate the main spectrogram using one-dimensional CNNs, which is based on the fact that all steps to calculate, to calculate the main spectrograms are differentiable functions. So they could be, um, uh, they could be, um, sorry, uh, implemented using neural networks. So we first have an, an one-dimensional uh, convolutional layer to, to implement a male filter bank. So the output of this layer will be the result of the filter bank for each, for each uh, signal frame. And then we will calculate the energy of each band using uh, a L element wise uh, square function a mean value function and a, a logarithmic function to convert these energy values into decibels. So we initialize this, this, um, these layers to, to, to calculate the ML spectrogram, but we let the model uh, change during training. Uh, so so this, is the, this is the filter bank after training. Um, you can see that the, for high frequencies, the result seems uh, very, very noisy especially uh, beyond uh, four kilohertz, above four kilohertz. So this suggests that the information in this frequency band is not, uh, is not, does not contribute substantially to the, to the classification. So to corroborate this finding, we, we try to, by resampling the data set at eight kilohertz and, and retrain, uh, train the model again, and we obtain similar results. So in this case, the interpretable nature of this front end, front end let us obtain useful information about the data set train at the training data, data set, which can be used to design models with fewer parameters. So now we will present uh, software tools for reproducible research that have been developed during this thesis. So another side effect of this deep learning paradigm shift is that most modern methods are considerably more complex than a decade ago, and heavily rely on, da on the data and the software used for their implementation. Besides, implementation details can profoundly affect the, the performance that is uh, reported in the, in the publications. Therefore, it has become increasingly challenging to, to, to reproduce the findings of a, of a new method or to compare a new method to earlier ones based only on the description found in publications. Um, that's why several authors and institutions are advocating not only for open access publications and open data, but also for the release of open source software tools and models. Um, so we have also contributed with the development of, of these tools uh, for reproducible research. For example, um, DK's models is an, uh, an open source Python library developed in the context of this thesis work, whose main goal is to facilitate the typical research pipeline of a decades related problem. For instance, uh, the picture, feature extraction and the data set management. Uh, it also includes a data generator to do the, the data loading and a class to manage, train, evaluate deep learning models. And it worth mentioning that all the experiments that are presented in this thesis were conducted using this, uh, this library. 
and those are available uh, and in open source uh, repositories. And regarding data sets, uh, we have also collaborated with the development of some data, a Python library to download, validate, and load, uh, and load data sets. And moreover, publicly available data sets for environmental sound recognition are of crucial importance to foster the development of the field as they encourage um, reproducible research and fair comparison of algorithms. Therefore, we have also contributed to the development of data sets for this field. So we published MAP, a uh, data set for sound event detection in urban environments. So the recordings were generated in several locations of Montevideo city. And it includes, it includes annotations of the sound events along with the audio and video files. We have also collaborated to curate the RANSAS data set, which is formed by MAP and other data sets from Tau University. Um, they include not only, not only uh, the, the annotations of the sound events, but also annotations of the vehicles in the video. So this can be used, this data set can be used for the development and evaluation of machine listening system uh, for audiovisual spatial urban understanding. So let me now summarize the contributions of this thesis. We proposed a model for sound, uh, sound classification, APNET, and we showed that this model is not suitable for the sound event detection task. So we, will, we, we also presented an extension for this task. Um, so the proposed models achieve incursion results, which are comparable to that from the opaque baselines, but with fewer parameters, while at the same time, they offer some kind of interpretability. This illustrates that there is not necessarily this trade-off between interpretability and accuracy. We also presented an interpretable front-end for end-to-end -end convolutional neural networks, and uh, also presented tools to foster reproducibility and to contribute to the development of open source machine learning models in the context of the decades community. And finally, we presented two data sets for environmental sound recognition in urban environments that were curated during this thesis. So this thesis has described several interpretable uh, deep learning models for sound classification and event detection. We have worked on both uh, audio representations and discriminators. And given that post hoc methods tend to be less reliable, we focused on interpretable and intrinsically interpretable machine learning models. We leverage domain knowledge to tailor our model to the audio related problems. Uh, for instance, for APNET, we propose a frequency dependent similarity to compare the input instances and the prototypes. Um, besides, interpretable architectures like APNET allow the designers to refine the bug and improve the model. So in this regard, we propose two automatic methods for network refinement. And we show that after this two, two refinement process, the model improves the results even outperforming the most competitive baseline. Uh, in addition, the ability to inspect, uh, to inspect the network allows for evaluating its performance beyond the typical accuracy, accuracy measure and provide useful insights into the inner workings of the model. So we argue that the interpretability of the model and its reliable explanations um, increase its uh, trustworthiness. So this is important for end users relying uh, into the, relying on, on the network outputs, even in low risk applications. But uh, this approach of using intrinsic, intrinsical interpretable methods uh, has some limitations. Uh, since intrinsical interpretable models are domain and application specific, it is not straightforward to build, to build models that that work well in different contexts and domains. For instance, although we evaluate APNET in three different contexts, urban sounds, speech, and music. Um, this model is limited in representing, in representing sound mixtures. Another limitation of intrinsic models is that they are usually architecture specific. For instance, the models proposed in this uh, thesis are discriminative CNNs, since these this are the most used architectures in the environmental sound recognition field. However, other relevant architectures, such as current networks or transformers, uh, are also being used and have excellent results. And however, that the, the interpretable models that we propose are not easy to adapt to these kind of uh, architectures. And some 
Some recent uh, research is intended to learn more powerful representations by including information or processing information from, from other modalities, such video or text. And the models that we propose are limited to a single audio modality. And so let me finish by presenting some research lines for future work. So several visualization tools have been proposed to interact with different parts or aspects of a deep neural network, especially CNNs for image classification and especially for post-talk methods. And so we believe that similar tools should be developed in the, in the so should be developed for explaining and, and interacting with a, with a machine learning model in the audio domain, especially for intrinsically interpretable models. And we consider the visualization tool for APNet as an attempt in that direction, but more research and development are needed. And regarding visualization tools, uh, we show that it is possible to design tools to interact with the models. Uh, so they use, in, in our case, the user can navigate in this two-dimensional space and change the prototypes and remove prototypes and train the model again. And so this, this kind of allows for human in the loops uh, human in the loop strategies, training strategies. Um, and this approach can be also used for, for debugging the model and, and doing domain adaptation. So we believe this research direction is of interest for the machine learning uh, researchers working on audio, especially in problems where the expert knowledge is fundamental. And we mentioned the limitation of the proposed models to extend to other architectures. And this limitation widely exists in the interpretability field. Uh, so most work in interpretability research has focused on CNNs, in particular for image classification. So we believe that interpretability methods uh, beyond CNNs should be taken, taken into account in the other domain. And finally, the development of tools for audio interpretability is another relevant direction for future, future research. So interpretable methods uh, interpretable post-talk methods are usually hard to implement. And they, there are some implementations that are not standardized. And again, these, these uh, methods are focused on the image classification task. So an audio-related problem has several specificities that should be taken into account. And this calls for specific software tools to simplify the development of interpretable deep learning models in the audio domain. Oh, thank you very much.